Hi guys, so I wanted to come on here real quick and I wanted to give you guys my four week post-op update. I just let you guys know how I've been feeling, how my incisions are healing, um, how the process has been like transitioning from, you know, liquids to soft foods to solids. I'm now in phase four, which is the solid phase or introducing solid foods into your diet. Um, and yeah, just give you guys, kind of let you know how I'm feeling in all those areas. So, I weighed myself yesterday, because yesterday was my four-week mark. I am at 216 right now, which is great. So, um, when I went into pre-op, the day that I did my, all my pre-op stuff, the day before surgery, I was 236. So, I'm at 216. So, that means in a month, I've lost 20 pounds, which is great. Uh, I don't think that's the norm. I mean, I mean, I don't think that's what's going to continue. I don't think I'm going to be losing 20 pounds a month. I think a lot of it had to do with the whole, you know, when I was on clear liquids and stuff and really having a really incredibly low calorie intake while my stomach was healing. Um, so I don't think I'm going to be losing 21 pounds a month from here on out. But um, it's still great. It's still progress. And from last year around like October, November when I was 267 and then losing, being at 216 is really great. I'm, I mean, I'm completely, I'm thrilled. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to keep losing. I am excited that I'm only 16 pounds to be like in the 100s. That's really exciting. I haven't been in the 100s since high school. So I can't wait for that. As far as what I'm eating nowadays, I got an email last Monday from my nutritionist through Mer uh, Mexico Bariatric Center, uh, basically saying, you know, if you're up for it, you um, now is the time to start introducing solid foods into your diet. So that's what I've been doing. Um, not, I, I mean, it wasn't overnight. I mean, I'm still, I'm still not fully on solid foods yet. Um, so basically what a day looks like for me is I will make a green smoothie, like a high protein green smoothie, with lots of leafy greens, power greens. Um, I'll probably make a video about how I make my morning smoothie, but I've been drinking that every single day. Even when I was in my um, phase three, the soft liquids, I was making a green smoothie and it's just good. It's full of protein. It really gets me going in the morning. So I'll definitely make a video about that in the future, near future. And then, so it usually goes green smoothie morning, always, always green smoothie. And then I've been alternating lunch and dinner. I'll definitely have one protein shake a day. So a third, like a 30 gram of protein shake because I'm still supposed to be having, um, I think it's 60 to 80 grams of protein per day. So that's what I, that's my goal. That's what I aim for. So basically I have a green smoothie every single day, a protein shake, and then one solid foods meal is where I'm at right now, uh, being four weeks out. Um, usually what my solid meals consist of is, um, I'll have like an egg scramble, like eggs are good protein. I'll throw bacon, some vegetables in there. Um, I've made a low carb shepherd's pie. So like really minced up meat with, um, carrots, like canned carrots and green beans. So it's nice and soft. And then like the just oven mashed cauliflower. I'll put that on top and that's really good. I still have like a whole tray of it and like I'm just, I'm probably going to be eating that forever. I made that a couple days ago. Um, I try to bite a chicken. I don't know if I can actually handle chicken. They say if you can handle chicken, you could pretty much handle anything. So maybe I'm going to try chicken tonight and see how it goes. Um, I did have um, some low carb toast with some high protein peanut butter on it the other day as well. That went good. Um, there's just certain things that are, are good. And then there's some things that just really aren't. So for me, um, when I was in my soft food phase, I tried to make a baked ricotta, just a little like ramekin of baked ricotta. I tried to eat that. I couldn't I, it made my stomach so upset and I don't know if it was from the ricotta or, or the other cheeses that I had in it or if it could have been uh, the 
sauce that I put on top. So like I put like a marinara sauce, like a really smooth marinara sauce. So it would taste like, you know, like a lasagna or something. So that didn't sit well in my stomach. So I made a bunch of ramekins of those. And then I just gave them to a friend because <laughs> it just didn't sit right with my stomach. Another thing that's not working out for me that I tried in my soft food, food phase is beans. I don't know what it is. Um, my stomach just gets really like gurgly and I get really burpily, burpily. I get really burpy and I think it's just the gas from the beans. Uh, so I'm not eating beans right now either. Um, and the other night I tried to eat some cheese. So I had my protein shake, I had my green smoothie and then I wasn't really hungry for dinner at night, but I knew I had to get some protein in and some solid food. So I just had like a cheddar cheese bar, you know, those like just snack ones. And I got totally sick. It was the first time I threw up like since being in the hospital at when I got my surgery. So that just didn't sit well for me. So, so I think it might be, I think I might be like lactose intolerant now. It's not uncommon. I did some research. It's not uncommon to become lactose intolerant after you've had a um, gastric sleeve surgery done. I hope I'm not. Maybe in a couple months I'll try to do cheese again. But after the whole baked ricotta upsetting my stomach so much and then throwing up after I had a cheese stick, uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna avoid cheese for a while until I'm fully healed. Um, so you know, every day I'm just trying to incorporate new things into my diet and um, just get my protein in and my water intake. My water intake's huge. So I was having a really hard time getting my water in and. I don't know what it was just like trying to drink like out of a regular water bottle or something I'm used to like drinking a water bottle with a straw and they say like no straws no straws like don't drink anything out of a straw um, and then I was doing a little research on it and it seems like a lot of the gastric sleeve community is like divided on this like the whole no no straw and straw thing I'm reading all these articles reading all these you know debates on it and basically the whole thing is so you don't fill up your stomach with air so it doesn't cause your new stomach discomfort. Well, I the only way I can get my water down is if I drink out of a straw pretty much. And so I did. I did this this past week. I started using my big 73 ounce water bottle with the straw and I started out really slow and it didn't cause me any discomfort. Um I know it says in all my paperwork, don't use a straw, don't use a straw. But, you know, after reading other people's experiences and like the reason behind it and other professionals, you know, opinions, I'm using a straw. It's the only way I can get my water down throughout the day. If I don't, I don't, I don't get to my 64 ounces that I need. So that's what I've been doing as far as food and water. Uh, those are the big changes that, and big changes that have been going on and what I've been incorporating, what I've been doing. Um, my incisions are healing really well. I just uploaded a picture onto my Instagram, which is also BSG Jack, if you want to go check it out. Um, and I really wanted to just kind of show, I wasn't trying to do like a body comparison because I feel like it's too soon. Um, but I took a picture of my incisions to show how they were healing because they were healing really well. And I couldn't believe how much smaller my stomach was in just like a month's time. And so that got me really excited. And um, it just made me just think like, you know, if you're doing any kind of body transformation, if you're trying to bulk up, if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to do, it's so hard for you to see like the subtle day-to-day -day changes in your body. Um, you can, you know, people can tell you and you can feel your clothes fitting like looser and that's nice and that's cool um, to hear that and to see that and feel it. But like when you take a picture of your body and you compare it to a month, a few months, a year, whatever, and you can see how much your body changes, it's just so rewarding and it's just like, it just makes you feel so good. I, like I said, I was just trying to like show my incisions, but like the pictures that I did side by side, I was like, wow, my stomach's smaller. My stretch marks are fading. My incisions, of course, are healing really well. But I was so proud of myself and I was just, it's just a great feeling. So if you're doing anything and you're, you know, 
you want to see those results, take pictures. Take pictures of yourself. Take pictures of your body. And you'll be able to see those changes happening a lot faster than, you know, you would just in real life. I feel good. I'm feeling like I have a little bit more energy now. Uh, now that I'm incorporating solid foods into my diet, I, you know, during the whole, like, um, thick liquids and soft foods phase, I wasn't getting a, I wasn't getting a lot of food in like quantity wise. And it wasn't, you know, wasn't, didn't have a lot of like nutritional value, but now that I'm like incorporating, you know, leafy greens, proteins, um, actual meats, um, and stuff like that, I think that my body, I like, I can burn more calories. Like I'm probably only getting like five to 800 calories a day. If 800 is like a huge stretch, but I do feel like I have more energy. I was taking a lot of naps during the earlier phases because I was just tired. I just, I didn't have energy because I wasn't, my body didn't have anything to burn off. Um, another thing I want to work on more right now is walking. I, I do enough walking. I'm getting like maybe like 7,500 to like 8,000 steps a day right now. Um, but I really want to start getting up to 10,000 cause I was getting about 10 or 12,000 before they've been telling me since literally I got out of surgery. Like walking is the best thing for you right now. So that's what I've been doing. Just trying to get my steps in. I'm not getting a lot. I really want to start like walking my dog, <sighs> but she is a menace and I'm still like not able to like lift 30 pounds or do anything like drastically crazy. So I want to start walking my dog, but, um, she's a terror. Oh, speak of the devil. Here she is. She's a pup. She's going to be one year old. So she's still kind of crazy and hyper and she's a boxer, which are already super high energy. Um, so, <laughs> okay, that is enough, honey. But, um, I think I need to go start going for more walks or go for daily walks. And then once I hit my eight week mark, uh, and I'm all healed up, I am definitely going to be taking this girl. All right, guys, I'm going to go play with my dog, but... Uh, I will update you guys on more, more progress and more weight loss stuff. Uh, I'll probably make a video next about my green smoothie that I make in the morning because it's really high protein and gives me a little energy boost and because, you know, we can't have caffeine yet. Well, I'm not doing caffeine yet because I'm terrified of acid reflux and all that ever, ever since this whole cheese incident's been going on. But, um, all right, guys, I will see you in my next video. Bye.